you people are great. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 3, verse 13. I won't preach long if you'll help me. And, uh, but if you don't help me, I might get long. It may take a long time. I may just be up here for you just couldn't believe how long it would take. But if you'll help me, you're going to help me. I heard somebody say that. I know whose voice that was. I've heard that voice before. Verse number 13 said, Brethren, the Apostle Paul talking to us, the church, brethren, I believe that covers sister in two. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching for those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I'm going to preach just a short time reaching for the goal. Reaching for the goal. Hallelujah. In Jesus. Lift your hands to it. Kind of, you kind of unique that Paul says the first thing I do I, I forget some things forgetting the things which are behind me though I just you know it, uh, the elementary class will uh, the uh, con the uh, first grade second graders and and uh, uh, so I can tell you what forgetting means uh, you know, it's, it's just a simple word you, I forgot you know uh, it's, and, but I kind of didn't. I just wondered what it really, what it really meant was, and it said, uh, it said the definition of forgetting is trying hard, trying hard to uh, achieve or succeed at something. You 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 forget now, uh, and, and and the thing you got to forget what's behind you, and reach for the things which are before you. And it says also, it says. It, to fail to remember. Fail to remember. I, I, I can't, I just fail, I can't remember the things that, that God has done for me. I can't, I can't remember uh, the failures that, that I have experienced in my life. I, I can't, re I fail to remember those things. Uh, they have, they've slipped my mind. I kind of just, I just kind of let them, I, I put them out of my mind. That, that's what the definition of forgetting is. It means to cease to think of or consider. Take no consideration of the things that God had brought you from or that the things that you feel you left behind. Forgetting the things which are behind me. Don't, I don't, don't even take in consideration when, when the devil comes at me, and he comes at me just like he does you, when he comes at me with all that he has, with, with all the strength he's got, when he comes at me, I can't even, I don't even want to consider talking to him. I, I don't want to consider the things that he brings up into my, out of my past, I, how he reaches back, way back yonder, and, and uh, you know, and, and, and reaches and gets a hold of things that's in my life that, that he knows that I dropped the ball at, that I, he knows I failed at. Uh, he, when he, he reaches back and, and, and gets a hold of all of them sermons that, that I didn't do good at and, and that I didn't 
get my point across or, or he reaches back and he gets a hold of things that, that I used to do, the, the parties that I, I used to love and the drinking and so forth. When he reaches back, I, I don't even want to consider it anymore. I don't even want to think about it. I don't even want it to come in my mind. I don't want to drive my mind down with things of that sort because I'm on a journey tonight. I'm pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. I can't consider the failures that I have experienced in my life. And, and, and I have a goal. I've set a goal in my life. Now, now, young people, uh, some young people, they don't have goals. They, they, they're too young to have goals. They, they think they're going to live forever. Right. But us old gray-haired goats, we, we've set goals in our life. There's things that we want to accomplish. There's things that I want to see happen in my life. I've not reached it yet. I, I've not, I'm pressing, but I've not got there. One of my big goals uh, is to see this church faithful, see the members of this church faithful. I've not got there yet. There's still too many missing tonight. There's still too many empty pews in this place tonight. There's still people sitting at home with nothing to do and all the time in the world to do it and they're not interested in being in church. They're not interested in, in, in here being with us tonight. You say, well, that you shouldn't preach that way. Well, I like to know why not. The devil preaches that way. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we need to set a goal tonight. My goal is to see every person that comes me, Pastor, I got a goal to see them in the house of God every time I turn the key in that door back there. I've got to go. That's my goal. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to irritate the devil. I'm going to irritate that slob. I'm going to preach against everything I can think of. I'm going to lift you up above the shadows of doubt and fear. I'm going to preach the word of God to you. I'm going to try to get you. I'm going to try to stir you. I'm going to try to make you madder than a wet head. I'm going to try to get you upset with me. And then I'm going to try to preach to you the truth and get you more involved than you've ever been. I'm after the devil tonight. I'm preaching against him tonight. I've got a goal. My goal is to see every one of us and every one of you faithful. Amen. Say it with me. Faithful. You are faithful. I'm going to tell y'all, I just... I'm, just, I'm not I'm not having a heart attack. I'm fine. And so, forgetting, fail to remember. I've had people tell me we used to we used to have some pretty good debates when I was at Yellow Creek Nuclear Plant when I was a welder over there because welders over there didn't do nothing. <laughs> I stood around and read my New Testament all the time. They didn't have nothing for me to weld. And so I just kind of, she said, my foreman said, well, you just kind of stay out of the way. I said, I'm good at that. I can do that. We used to have some pretty good debates. They had, or services rather, they have, they'd have service at 12 o'clock. Or I say, I believe it was 11.30 to 12. And they would get a speaker. And they'd have men and women sitting in the bigger areas of this room and having church. And somebody would preach. And guess who they asked to preach? It was me. You wouldn't believe that, would you? When I got through that day, this black brother, he said, Say, said, what kind of preacher are you? I said, I'm a Pentecostal apostolic preacher. He said, oh, that explains it. He said, y'all are a little more serious than we are. But I've talked, I've talked to them about the way of God. I, I, talked to, I, I didn't pull any punches. I didn't go on there, I didn't go on there and say, well, if you're not saved, you're going to be lost to some extent. I just preached. And I've had people say, well, have you ever drank beer? I said, yeah, a truckload. Right. They said, well, you're just as bad as I am. I said, oh, no. Come on. Oh, no. Come on. There are things I forget about. Right. I forgot about what, right. what Budweiser tastes like. Right. Come on. I don't know anything about that stuff. I don't know. I can't tell you what Jack Daniels whiskey tastes like. I can remember it burns like fire. I can't remember that. But I think I forget about that stuff. 
I don't want the devil throwing that up in my face. Because I don't go there anymore. I forgot all about that lifestyle. I don't, I don't cheat. I don't steal. I work for my money. They say, for what y'all give me. And I really think I work for them. Just a few, my personal opinion. And so I don't want the devil throwing stuff up at me. I have forgot about that, Jacob. I forgot about the lifestyle. I forgot about getting up in, on Sunday mornings and having Sister Creasy get the girls ready for church so they can get on, get out of the house so I can go to the horse barn, work on my stables. At my horse. I, I'm forgetting all that. I don't even want it coming back in my mind. You understand? Because I set a goal in life. And I'm reaching. I'm trying hard to reach that goal to succeed in something. I want to, I want to, re. I, uh, it's success won't come to me. It just don't come to me. I got to have a art to reach for it. It's just not going, it's not going to just happen. I got to reach out for it. This church is not going to get to where I want it to be, me sitting at home playing on a computer or playing on my telephone. It's not going to happen. I got to reach for it. I got to preach about it. If we don't have faith, I'm not preaching faith strong enough. If we don't have healing, I'm not preaching healing strong enough. If people are not getting the Holy Ghost, I'm not preaching Holy Ghost strong enough. It ain't going to just come to me. It ain't going to hunt me down. Success is not going to, spiritual success I've been referenced to. It's not going to just hunt me down. I got to go get it. I got to fight for it. I got to put them spiritual boxing gloves on and I got to get in the arena with that devil. I got to duke it out with him. I'm on a journey. I got a goal. I set a goal. And I'm reaching with all that the, the strength that I have, I'm running and with all the sense I've got in my body. I'm running for it. I'm wanting that success. I'm trying hard to succeed in something. Everybody ought to have some kind of a goal. I'm pressing. The apostle said, toward the light. There's people today that seem to be so victorious, so dedicated, and, 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 and so, uh, so Christian. Uh, they're, they're so dead, seemingly so Christian, but they're, but they're constantly, constantly, constantly facing defeat. Somebody said, that's what the devil's job is. Many of those running for Jesus today is just running on half throttle. I've got my, my lawnmower. Man, I got a lawnmower that's out of sight. Boy, that dude is some kind of stout. That's that old Kubota diesel. Man, stand me that thing. It's a good mower. I was cutting grass here a few days ago, a few weeks now. And I kept noticing, man, this thing don't seem to be doing right, you know. And I, I'm going to listen to the engine. I said, well, I got a problem here. Something's not right. So I pulled him on the handle back and I got to look at it. I thought, oh, my, I ain't got the problem. Pushed it wide open. That's my problem. So I shoved her. Oh, man, she was ready to go. Here I went again. Got about halfway around. I noticed, I go, man, something's not right here. Uh -oh. Something's not right. And I stopped again standing. I looked at my throttles, half throttle again. So I pushed her open again, run about halfway around, and, and it happened again. I thought, now, wait a minute here. I ain't got a lot of sense, but I got enough sense. No, that ain't right. Here, I'm trying to cut grass. I'm trying to get a job done, and I'm running half throttle. Are you understanding where I'm going? There's people trying to live for God, or they say they are, and they're only running half throttle. They're not running wide open. They're just kind of moving along and just kind of trying to trying to kind of make make things meet, and and and, I, and they're running on half throttle. So you know what I've done? I fixed it instantly. Instantly fixed it. I got me one of them bungee cords. <laughs> I hooked that dude on this thing and put it around that throttle, pulled it wide open, swung around, hooked it, and cut out, cut the grass. <laughs> now I'm running full throttle again. Right. Man, it beats up paying two or three hundred dollars for Wooten to fix it, I can tell you that. 
but people are are, are trying to, to, to make it on half trial. They're, they're trying to make, and I don't mean to be rude. If I hurt your feelings, just get over it. But the, you can't live for God on half throw. Right. You've got to run wide open. God, the devil, the devil will, will, will overrun you. The devil will discourage you. He'll drag you down. Is anybody hearing me? He'll just, he'll. Make things happen in your life. If you're running full throttle, if you're running with all the power you got, all the strength you got, giving it all you got, I'm telling you, you will overcome the devil. But if you're trying to do this on half throttle, you will never make it. But we are following an example of the Apostle Paul. We're, we're forgetting the past. There's... There's skeletons in every closet that's represented in this building tonight. There's things in your closet you don't want me to know, and I don't want to know. I've got things I don't want you to know, and you ain't going to know unless God tells you. There's things, that, and the devil wants to bring it all up to you. But I come to tell the devil tonight, greater, greater, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I know I got problems. I know I used to be a loser. I know I used to smoke pot. I know I used to take some speed. I know I got stopped one night for, for drinking. And, and <laughs> the old boy said, the old boy said, I still ain't forgiven him for this. He said, can that boy drive in your car drive? I said, well, yeah, I guess. He said, well, you better let him drive because you're going with me. I thought, uh-oh. I don't know something. devils man that that I can't preach to you because of what I used to be I oh, understand me you know what but the devil is a liar he tries to pull us down he tries to stop me from reaching my potential in God I'm following the apostles example forgetting the past Failing to remember, putting out of my mind the thing that I used to be, and pressing, trying to accomplish a goal that I have set. And by doing this, when this happens, and it's going to happen, honey, it's going to happen, because I'm not quitting. I'm not going to stop. The only way you're going to get rid of me is fire me. And last time I checked the church record, I wasn't even hired. I'm unemployed. You can't fire somebody unemployed. Are you understand? The only way it's going to happen is I, somebody will have to run me off because I've got a goal that I've set. I've got three years to reach that goal, and I'm going to reach it. I'm going to see it happen because I've set a goal. People set goals. My, my daughter back there, Rebecca, uh, excuse me, the doctor, <laughs> Dr. Bird had a goal which she was knee high to a grasshopper. She'd come in from school. She'd have her a little ruler. She'd go to her, her bedroom and she'd put dolls and stuff on the bed and she'd take that ruler and she was teaching those kids. She's pointing that ruler at them and, and she was talking to those babies and, and she was teaching and, and all the way through school, Sister Green, you remember, she had, her goal was to be a school teacher. She was, well, you can see right now, she reached her goal. Does anybody understand? Who's got a goal in this place tonight? You got a goal set if you ain't set one. Do you have a goal? You say, oh, I'm too old. Oh, no, you're not. I'm a lot older than you are and I've got a goal. You've got a goal? Set your goal and reach for it. Don't let up. Don't Shut up. Don't, don't stop. You got to go. You want to be the best preacher in the United States of the church of God. Get after it, son. Get after it. As it set you a goal. Set you something in your life to go by, to go to. I'm going to achieve it. I'm going to accomplish it. I'm going to see the best church in the Tennessee district sitting right here in this holler. Hallelujah. And when it does happen, and it's going to happen, when it happens, it's going to have an effect on everybody. 
you're going to enjoy the benefits of it. You're going to enjoy the pleasure of it, of the gold that God, that I have said that God does. It's going to, it's going to bleed over. It's going to go over onto the congregation because I'm going to get so excited. It's going to be so excitement. It's going to be such excitement in my 40. Third anniversary. It's going to be so exciting. We're going to have the best. Are you understanding? And you're going to get excited about it. It's going to excite y'all. It's going to excite you. you know, it's going to have an effect on everybody in the congregation. And the devil is going to lose. I wish somebody would stand up and scream at me. I'm going to help you do it. I wish somebody say, I'm going to help you reach that goal. I wish somebody say, I'm going to help you reach that goal. Got me a goal going to build a new building over here, Roger, and we're going to do this job. We, all we're waiting on now is springtime. We're going to pull some nails, and we're going to throw out some sheet rock, and we're going to tear up some paint jobs, and we're going to move some high beams, and, and we're going to we're going to uh, get an electrician out here and, and, and hook up some temporary poles. I think we got enough uh, going on for that, and we're going to see something accomplished. He said, what, what, what are you going to do all that for? Because we got to make room. we got to have some room. If I'm going to get everybody to call some pastor, if I'm going to get them involved, I'm going to have somewhere to put them. I'm going to have a nail to hang them on. Are oh, you yeah, listening to me? we got to go. we got to save souls. Now, if you're running half throttle, you're not going to get involved. If you're running half throttle, I don't mean a thing to you. I'm a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. But if you run in full throttle with me tonight, if my preachers will get with me, my laity will get with me, my, my teachers will get with me, we're going to run full throttle. We're not backing up. We're not stopping. Come on, somebody tell the devil. I'm set to go with the preacher. I'm going to tell him, get his soul. Hallelujah. This long, you might want to stay around. I ain't gonna quit now. It, it ain't gonna get no worse. I might get better. I can't get worse. Scott, you gonna help me? You gonna help me set that goal? I'm, I'm counting on you now. I'm counting on you, boy. Come on, Some one thing I gotta do first, Jacob. I gotta forget, or I can't run. I got to forget the failure. I gotta forget the ones that didn't stay around. I gotta forget those that just came by and said, "Hope you make it. Hope you make it." I gotta forget that because we got we had 100 last Sunday. First time we did that since the pandemic, except homecoming. We had 94 today. You understand? We're we got to have We got the bridges. We parked the bridges behind us, Rod. We got to go forward. God told that old man of God, said, you tell Israel to go forward. Don't, don't look back at Pharaoh. Forget, forget all of what. Don't even consider Pharaoh. He's a punk. He's history. I'm going to drown that rascal. Well, you understand. I hope I'm making sense. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocus, Asia, and whatever that other word is. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace be bought. Well, what an introduction. Right. What an introduction from this old preacher man. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Here it is. To an inheritance incorruptible. I'm reading. I'm reading now, Brother Mark. I'm sorry. First Peter 1 and 4. Put it there for me. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. And that fate of not away. You ready for this? Reserved. I have reservations. My room's already paid for. Reserved in heaven for you. God's already purchased it. It's already paid for you. Sing the song. 
it's already paid for. No contract to sign, no fear of getting behind, no furniture to require. There'll be no need or desire. It's already paid for. Peter said it's already reserved in heaven for you, and I'm going to tell you, it's waiting on us. If you'll crank that thing up a uh, full throttle, you have to get you a bungee cord or a line of some kind and tie that throttle open. Get with the program. Get out of half throttle and let's live for God with all our heart. In other words, in other words, the apostle said, we are chosen. We're chosen by the foreknowledge, by the foreknowledge. He looked down time. He looked down to today. He chose this right. day by the foreknowledge of God. I'm chosen. Right. Right. I wish that was a Pentecostal preacher. Through this, God, through this, God gives us freedom. From fear or doubt. I know what the devil does. I know what, I know what he does. I've dealt with him. I faced off with him. We, we stood toe to toe, kneecap to kneecap, nose to nose, eyeball to eyeball. I stood there with him. I know what he's up to. Sister Creasy, he's up to make me and you doubt what God's going to do. He's already played his, he's already played his trunk on. Is anybody listening? Not Donald Trump either. The Trump card. He's already paid, played his joker. I'm telling you. He's got, he's got to put everything he's got in it. And we've stood the test. He's tried you. He's tried y'all. He's tried everybody in here. He played his best card. And somebody let, he's threw his best punch, Joe, uh, Jacob. He's threw his best punch at you. And you're still here. Is anybody hearing me? You may not be the, the hottest thing in the town. You may not be the most spiritual thing around. But you're here. Somebody on to jump up and clap your hands and say, I might not be the best, but I'm here. I'm still here, devil. You played your best card. You threw your best card. I wish good. I'm not quitting. I'm not folding up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Why? I got a baby. I said a And I'm going to see it done. I'm going to see it done. I defile the hand of the enemy. I curse that devil. I bind his presence. God is a healer. God is a deliverer. God is a sanctifier. Somebody help me. I bind the hand of the devil. Somebody come up. Sister King, I want you to do me a favor. Would you do that? Come over here and lay your hand on Sister Creasy and pray and bind the hand of doubt. Bind the hand of fear and, God, and command that God heal her body. Come on, somebody stand and pray with Sister King in Jesus' name. Sister Creasy, God will heal you. God's going to take care of this situation. Come on. I set this goal. I didn't set a goal. The devil can't stop me. The devil can't do anything with it. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do it. Here's what I'm going to do. I want you, you got a need. I want you to come on. I'll, I'll back off right now. I'll finish it later. Got a need? Come on. Stand around this front. We're going to lay hands on you. Come on down here, Brother Mark. Wait, come on. Never mind the computer. Come on down here, preachers. I want y'all to pray for these people.